All right, so uh, we are going to go ahead into the Hackathon Award Ceremony. Uh, our very own Tomas Ben, you, you want to take it away? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Welcome to the uh, MIT Bitcoin Hackathon uh, Award Ceremony. Uh, thanks for enduring the, yeah, this whole weekend. I hope that you guys enjoyed the, the, the week full of uh, insightful talks, uh, great panel discussions, and lots of opportunities to learn uh, yeah, something very important about this fascinating world of Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency technologies, right? So, first, uh, let's mention about, uh, let's mention our sponsors, our anchor sponsors, uh, Nobel, Nobel DAO, uh, our gold sponsor, SEA, and our two community partners, uh, uh, Zero Hash and Aspect, uh, who sponsored the, the two tracks that we have in this hackathon. So let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, this event. So the hackathon is a development competition that happens in parallel with this expo. So uh, the kickoff uh, was on Friday, 6 uh, p.m., and the competition uh, went through, uh, through, uh, through Friday and Saturday all the way to midnight. So in total, uh, uh, it was 30 hours of competition in uh, which the developers are uh, yeah, working hard uh, to come up with uh, interest projects uh, and, and solutions, right? So, uh, I've, uh, of course, one of the goals of this, uh, of this event is uh, to portray projects that come up with innovative solutions uh, uh, to interest problems using the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency technologies. But also, uh, it's in a, uh, we, um, we want to give an opportunity for beginners to uh, uh, have the opportunity to learn about this space and, uh, and be a sort of a, a, gate, a gateway for, the, uh, for this world and uh, who knows, uh, to become the new generation of developers and application, uh, yeah, application engineers uh, in this space, right? Uh, just some numbers about, the, about this event. So this year, uh, we had the two tracks. Uh, uh, one track is, uh, we call it the uh, decentralized applications. And uh, the other track, uh, which is the uh, Bitcoin uh, Lightning Taproot track. Uh, so in total, we had uh, 10K in uh, cash value price, we uh, had uh, 310 registrations uh, from hackers uh, uh, from uh, 42 countries. Uh, as I mentioned, 30 hours of, uh, uh, of development hacking. And uh, in, uh, at the end, we had 18 um, uh, project submissions from all over the world, right? And uh, yeah, yeah um, countless uh, uh, cans of uh, uh, energetics and coffee and all this stuff. <laughs> Okay, having said that, so I will, pay, I will hand over to my colleague who will present the winners of, of this competition. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I'm going to try and make this as pithy as possible since we're at the end of the day. Um, so, jumping into it for track two, decentralized applications, which was brought to us by Aspecta ID, uh, Souls is the winner of the track. So, if you guys would like to come down. Congratulations. Hello, how's it going? Let's try that again. How's it going? I'm there. I know, end of the day. I know, I know. Uh, I'm Ridwan. This is? I'm Kevin. And we have three other team members in two other time zones. So I couldn't make it. Two in Southeast Asia, one in Germany, uh, who, uh, who are part of the team. And then this is our Souls Verification app. So motivation being, I like sneakers, as you can see. And I also like Bitcoin blockchain. So I thought, okay, why not kind of marry them all together? And then my team was gracious enough to kind of humor me in this project that could turn out to be more serious. And it's been great so far. So problem statement. Yeah, so problem is there, there's about over a billion uh, sneakers being traded uh, in the US. Uh, one in at least one in five uh, are fake, and there's very high cost to solve this problem. A lot of platforms spend a lot of money and human labor and logistical uh, challenges to verify these sneakers. And 
the current solutions in the market have some limitations. Many of the major platforms, uh, they have in-house teams to verify sneakers, but a lot of fake sneakers still sneak uh, through the gaps. Uh, major apps include uh, Check Check, Legit App, and Legit Mark. Uh, as you can see from screenshots, most of these apps only allow the sellers to uh, put in some pictures, and there are many negative reviews online of the machine learning algorithms that these uh, apps use, and there's no accountability for the verification. So there's a lot of false positive and false negatives uh, in, this, in this app. And so our solution, we're looking at a decentralized community verification network. Essentially what you have is an entire community of verifiers around your local community, uh, regional area, et cetera. So instead of going to eBay, instead of going to StockX, which is more centralized sources, you have all your verifiers at your sneaker stores and verified verifiers, essentially. And eventually, we'd want to make smart contract agreements, but right now, we're really just focusing on the verifier and, and then just getting payments that way. So going through the app real quick. And so this is our flow for our customers here. So as you can see, you have the sign-up page, and then you put in all your information, and then you upload your shoes, and then put in pictures. You see this map over here, and then... You pick your verifier, and after that, they essentially approve, hey, like, yeah, I'll verify this or not. They look at how much Bitcoin you're offering, 0.01, that's a lot of Bitcoin just to get shoes verified, so they better accept that. Um, and then that's essentially it. So then at the end of it, we basically process a payment via the Lightning Network, uh, thanks to Brandon Voltage for helping us get that all set up. Um, and that's really about it as far as app flow goes. Again, really differentiating from what you have with check check what you have with legit because it's only pictures and it'll ask you a bunch of questions we'll have the same thing however you're going to take it to actual verifier and actually have them feel the material feel okay this feels right is the box okay is it this is that like you there's there is a touch component to this and so that's what those apps would unfortunately miss out on and so this is essentially the QR code. You can actually scan this and you can actually pay us if you wanted to. That well, I couldn't get the channel open, but that is a legit QR code that we'd be using. <laughs> um, and then added functionality. Yeah, so within the 30 hours, uh, we worked on different uh, parts of the roadmap to varying degrees of progress. Uh, and these are some items that well, we didn't quite complete. Uh, for example, adding more functionality for the sellers, uh, ability to sell the shoes uh, through these verifiers. We also looked into expanding this to other kind of luxury goods and improving the ecosystem growth by potentially having our own token or issuing the NFT certificates uh, to the sellers. So with, our, with Souls, you can step up your sneaker game. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right, and for our track one winner, which was Bitcoin, Lightning, and Taproot, and presented by Zero Hash, uh, our winner is the group Lightning Bounties. Congratulations, you guys want to come up. Um, and as they're coming up, I will give my quick plug here. Uh, I just want to say thank you to our mentors who are on Discord. Um, and especially a big shout out to Brandon, who is here from Voltage. Uh, so like physically spending a couple of very late nights uh, with a lot of very confused people asking quite a lot of questions. So a lot of caffeine, a lot of chocolate. Thank you very much. If any folks are interested, because you're still here, um, we will be doing it again next year and we'd love to get more involvement. So please feel free to come up and talk to us. Hello. Hi guys, thanks for being here. So uh, we are the GitHub Lightning Bounties. So um, a little bit about uh, this project. We have created a micropayment system using the Lightning, uh, the Lightning Network. Um, we are, this project can, use, uh, can be used for many use cases, but we have used a very cool case uh, that rewards software developers for uh, their attributions to the uh, community on GitHub. So um, for more uh, details, now we're gonna jump with Mike. He's gonna give us like a, uh, details about the team. All right. So a little fun fact about all of us. Um, we actually met at last year's hackathon. Um, at that time, we're all work, working on different projects, you know, different teams. Um, for many of us, this is actually our first time building on Lightning Network. 
So we learned a lot of uh, a ton about the infrastructure of L2s on Bitcoin, and it was quite challenging. So like, God, I'll be honest, we're we're exhausted. <laughs> Thirty hours straight of just just looking at code, coding. So just bear with us if you know we start stuttering our words or anything like that. But you know, I think you guys understand. But it, it, honestly, it was it was it was so worth it because. We build something that we feel is actually that can really, you know, solve a pressing problem in the open source community. Now, Alex will tell us what that is. Yeah, so there's a there's a major pain point right now with the open source development and code con contributors. Um, often they'll be dedicating like significant portion of their time um, trying to improve different software projects, but they may not receive certain like monetary um, rewards, um, like expected value for their contributions. So this lack of incentive can definitely lead to decreased motivation um, and fewer contributions over time to certain open source projects. All right, that's where we step in. So like Lightning Bounties addresses this pain point by uh, providing a seamless way to reward code contributors with Bitcoin for their, for their work. Um, by automating payments, uh, a payment process through GitHub Actions, developers can receive instant compensation for their awesome contributes. And um, this will encourage, you know, like a more, it'll really just like contribute to more motivation to contribute to open source projects and just kind of foster a more vibrant and, um, you know, collaborative, uh, you know, uh, community, uh, so forth. All right. Um Beautiful, so let's take a look at how this actually works. Complicated diagram, let's break it down real quick. On the left, you have your pull request contributor. On your right, you have your base repository that is receiving the pull request. In the middle, this is simulating the thread where we discuss the pull request in progress and its resolution. So our story begins at the top left. Contributor submits a pull request as normal. Our GitHub actions are gonna kick off First, a call to the base repository's lightning uh, node in there, and we're gonna generate an invoice. That invoice is gonna make its way into that pull request thread, and we're gonna wait the contributor to pay that small invoice. All right, why do you want your pull request contributors paying invoices to you for the pleasure of submitting their code? First, prioritization. Um, you have that bug that's blocking you on your business or personally, why not add a bounty onto that, bring that to the top of the to-do list of that repository. Second, uh, ability to transfer API keys. So you can't really put your OpenAI API key in a pull request that's gonna be publicly visible and swept and it's gonna be maxed out. So instead of actually giving the key, let's give a small payment of compensation for that same inference payment right there. Um, and third, anti-spam. We're not here yet, but in a couple years, coding agents could be flooding your pull requests with uh, all this kind of weird code. If you're on GitHub, the bots are already telling you a project from 10 years ago has a small security vulnerability. It's like, thank you, okay? So these are three reasons that we might want the contributor to make a payment before officially submitting their pull request. All right, second step. Once that payment's been made, we're gonna kick off a call to OpenAI or another LLM provider, and we're gonna take the diff of that pull request, we're gonna run it through, look at a summary, security vulnerability. Another use case could be developers from the third world or developing worlds. Um, that don't speak English, that might have different languages in their code, ask the LLM to convert that into English or whatever the base repository is using as well in there. Security vulnerability obviously calling back to something like the XZ backdoor as well. So that's one of the things we're doing is we're getting that small payment that's allowing us to reimburse ourselves for that call to open AI. Over there on the left, optionally, the contributor is gonna add their own invoice to receive a reward if the pull request is uh, officially merged into the code right there. 
So finally, that review comes back. If the security vulnerability checks out, then manually the maintainers of the repo are gonna merge that code in and that's going to, again, with our GitHub actions, take that invoice from the contributor and go ahead and call pay invoice on the base repositories node and that's gonna transfer the funds back over to the contributor right there. So that is our workflow in a nutshell. Let's take you into the always fun live demo. We'll also say next steps are, if you don't know this, there is a marketplace for GitHub Actions where you can drag and drop them into your own repository. We'd like to get to the step where we can do that with our project, and that can bring lightning payments to a bunch of new people in different repositories right there. And if you're interested in collaborating, please reach out. We're all in the Boston area. All right, so should we, should we give it a shot? All right, so what we've got here is a fork over here and I've got some changes made. So you can see I've got a little change I'm gonna try to submit to the base repository and we've got some interesting lines in here. So the other thing we're gonna do is as a contributor, we're gonna add an invoice on there. So we're gonna create an invoice, let's say 30 sats for my PR. And let's take that invoice and we're gonna add it in currently, it's in our reward dot text right there. That's just the string of our invoice right there. So checking out what we've got, we have two files changed reward.txt where we have the invoice where we can be paid for our contribution and we have our actual code changes as well. So let's go ahead, add them. And push them up and open that pull request. So this is really where our solution comes in. We're gonna open up that pull request right there. And now our GitHub actions are gonna start kicking off that first step of anti-spam, generate an invoice that the contributor is gonna pay right there. So let's take this invoice right here that's generated by the base repository and have the contributor pay it. Right now, nope. Did we change this to that? There it is. One sat to get in. All right. Beautiful. You can see the sat has left my LN bits. And the GitHub Actions is pulling the server, the LN bits wallet for that. Once we have the payment, we can launch that LLM call, and we're gonna do that by hitting reviewers and just adding someone onto the repository. That's gonna trigger another event on the back end and kick off another GitHub action, and this is where we are generating our call to uh, check the security of this code right here. So give it a few seconds, and we'll finish up. Yes. All right. And so we've so the LLM has helped us correctly identify that we don't want a danger function that is going to remove your whole disk right there. So normally we would send this one back to the drawing board, but in this case, let's give them a reward. We're going to merge that in and that's going to trigger one final action and heading back to our contributor, you can see that we asked for this reward invoice right here. And we're hoping that gets paid right there. Thank you for your contribution and payment of those 30 sats for that contribution has been received. Thank you. All right. Oh. If you just wanna get on.
And if, if you want to reach out to us, we're going to continue working on this project. So feel free to reach out. And thank you, everyone. All right.